people really don't realize that I'm a pretty decent puncher. The way um, Tito was punching was like straight. And I've gotten better over the last six years. But he was like leaving his hands out. Uh, and, and leaving his hands out a little too long each time. What did you think about it? A little too long each time. He's not like. I've gotten really good the last three, four years, so. She's landed good. She's swinging and missing. So Tito Ortiz got knocked out by Anderson Silva. Now, before I get into this breakdown, if you guys want to know my opinion on the Evander Holyfield knockout, stay tuned to another video. I will briefly talk about that at the end of the video. Now, getting back to Anderson Silva knocking out Tito Ortiz. Basically, it's a typical case of a stiff uh, fighter uh, with quite slow punches aggressive facing a very defensive fast relaxed fighter who's actually thinking right because if you guys watch the fight you will notice that um, uh, the way um, the way um, Tito was punching was like straight but he was like leaving his hands out a little too long each time he's not like like punching and bringing it back he's like leaving it out there and um, his accuracy would I would say was also sort of not there even though he was aiming at the parts that Anderson Silva was at Anderson Silva was moving very defensively I would say almost like Mayweather he had really had that that hand here here he's like dodging punches moving back shoulder protecting protecting him one hand up one hand here he really used the Mayweather strategy you know very smart the way uh, Anderson Silva fought, you know, like always, Anderson Silva does, he's, he's a smart fighter. Um, as far as uh, what Tito did, you know, towards the end, he pretty much did every punch in the book, right? Almost pretty much each punch in the book. He did a cross, he did jab, jab, cross, he did hooks, he did body shots, he did like every single punch you can think of uh, before Anderson Silva just basically caught him with, um, with the right hook. And then he tried to do another hook, but then he ended up catching him with a left hook. And I would say that Anderson Silva straight up beat him using Mayweather's like defense strategy. And the knockout was straight up by the Holly style, in my opinion. You know, the way he just crossed him, boom, boom, got him on both sides. So uh, speaking of Bada Hadi, you know, I think it's a similar way that Bada Hadi got knocked out. It's like he totally discarded defense, total, total disrespect for the opponent's uh, game for the opponent's experience for the opponent's uh dangerous shots basically they they in this case i think both bother and um and tito ortiz they they both uh underestimated and they they're focused like a hundred percent on uh on offense and when you're only focused on, on 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 punching someone every shot you throw you're open and keep in mind guys a lot of people say well you should have kept this guard up well, we should have done this keep in mind that uh real fast power shots usually come from a low guard even kicks. So if you see, I see, for example, Conor McGregor's punch, so his left hand punch, it comes from down here, it goes up, it hits, and it comes back down. Uh, same thing with kicking. If you guys even see Muay fighters, if they do a right hand, a right leg kick, they will first drop their guard a little bit, then they will throw the kick. Taekwondo fighters also will throw their kicks a lot of times from a low guard. There's a reason for that. From a low guard, you just get more speed and more power. So. But uh, the problem with that is that you totally leave yourself open for a counter. And uh, counter fighters, defensive fighters are always dangerous in this sense because if you're only focused on defense, you're, 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 you're watching the other fighter the entire time, you have the luxury of seeing everything and getting out of the way and just picking those shots that count. And if you guys watch the fight, uh, Anderson Silva only threw, his first punch was a hook that he missed. After that, he threw an uppercut that he missed, but he almost caught him because he was timing him. He almost caught him. What did you think about it? You prefer the two-minute rounds as Tito Ortiz closes in on the corner. Not a lot of these punches landed good. He almost caught him. And then after that was basically the hook that got him. Another hook that he sort of tried to get him behind the head, but I don't even think that connected. And then that left, that last left hook to his, to his face. Um, it was a good fight. I really liked the fight. And uh, I do think... Tito Ortiz should, uh, should just stop fighting. I mean, he said that his punches had gotten better. But if you guys see the fight, I mean, he's leaving his punches out there. He's tense and he's leaving his punches out there. Anderson Silva is just relaxed. 
he's moving and he's throwing shots that are just like fast, not not leaving himself out there every time, you know. Maybe Tito Ortiz failed to do some sparring. I don't know, but he didn't look like he was fighting too smart. Yeah, I, th I think he should really quit. And and as far as uh, last but not least, the fight of uh, Evander Holyfield. Uh, maybe I should have said least. Uh, yeah, I think he should quit. He's almost 60. I think he's 58. And uh, I think he's done fighting. He's showed in the fight. I mean, he'd really... Uh, I think he's got no business fighting. The other guy's also much younger. He's like 15 years younger. So uh, I didn't uh, I didn't really like that fight. It's not even worth breaking it down. He should just quit. It was uh, it was uh, obvious that uh, he shouldn't be in the ring anymore. And uh, that's it. To the next video, guys. He's afraid of my power. And I've gotten better over the last six years. I've gotten really good over the last three, four years. So...